a late wake-up call. Empowering, enriching, and encouraging. Inspiring. It's exciting. A start. A sense of accomplishment, optimism, determination, and solidarity has crested here in New York. The adoption of the call for action sends a strong message to the world, a unified and urgent voice that calls on all people in all sectors to act now. We are intimately connected to the ocean, and this week, the UN Ocean Conference has placed oceans in the center of the sustainable development agenda. The gravity of the challenges from plastic pollution, ocean acidification, and overfishing can no longer be ignored. I think this conference really has uh, galvanized and mobilized the political will uh, that we need in order to really address the ocean as a whole. This has also kind of started processes all around the world, but this is only the beginning. This is not the end, so we need to start and, folk and, and continue this work uh, and I hope that we will see a, a new conference in 2020. Climate change uh, and ocean are really one and the same. You can't protect the ocean if you don't think, think about the overall picture, which is the climate. For us, it's really unfair if the, if the rest of the world said, well, it's your problem. It's not our problem. The world caused the problem, human caused the problem. And you when you think about action. call to action, so we're excited. asking the rest of the world, come join us and let's paddle this canoe together. It's no longer our canoe, it's everybody's canoe. We're very pleased with the outcome of uh, the UN Ocean Conference this week and the fact that nations by and large absolutely um, adopted the call for action. And it does have very clear language that nations should eliminate harmful fishery subsidies which fuel overfishing worldwide. We were expecting some sort of language from the US saying that they were dissociating themselves from the WTO reference. Only Russia supported the US and it was welcomed by a very heavy silence. And then of course, uh, France took you know, a lead to make a very strong declaration which was very long applauded. So obviously you've got a, an overwhelming majority of countries that really want to take steps for ocean sustainability. In addition to the call for action, voluntary commitments were announced during partnership dialogues and side events, from increasing marine protected areas to banning single-use plastics and launching new funding and initiatives. One of the key remarkable highlights of the week is the emerging leadership from island and coastal communities and the role of youth. What we're doing in Seychelles is we're trying to change the usual narrative you hear about islands. Islands are going to sink, poor little islands, you know, they're helpless. We are not helpless, as we're showing. And what, what we want to do is to show islands as incubators of innovative solutions. The primary message is that SDG 14 can't be achieved without Indigenous peoples, without Indigenous science and wisdom. We really need an entrenched position in these meetings going ahead into the future to guarantee our collective voice. The future I hope to see a lot of engagement, more youth engagement here at, during this conference because they are the leaders of today. They're not for the future, they're not leaders of the future, they're leaders today. Change. We need to change things now. The call for action may just be the beginning, but the UN Ocean Conference has taken a huge step forward in navigating a sustainable future. Hope has turned to action with over 1,300 voluntary commitments already registered and underway. It is not too late to save our ocean. For our summary and analysis, please visit our IISD website.